Before we start covering some freestyle events like Olympic trials and doing way too early team previews this spring and summer, let's make a way too early prediction for the 2025 NCAA Wrestling Championships. As we all know, the transfer portal is really heating up and a lot can happen from, well, early April until late March of next year. Heck, a lot is going to happen this summer, let alone in a year from now. So let's have some fun and make some educated guesses, if you want to call them that, on the NCAA Wrestling Championships. That will more than likely be potentially close, but more than likely a lot of these picks will be all over the place, which is part of the fun. Before we officially get started, welcome back everyone, and if you are new, welcome to True Tan Wrestling, the one-stop shop for fun wrestling topics and everything purple. If you have your own list of locked NCAA champs for next season already, feel free to leave those in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe while you're down there. Now, if you saw some of my other videos, you know I make some wild predictions, so let's make some wild educated guesses on the 2025 NCAA Wrestling wrestling championships through all 10 weight classes. One twenty five, I think we can all agree was a wild ride from well, weekend one to NCAAs. I mean the number one seed Brain Davis of Penn State didn't even play, so that's all I really need to say to prove that. Richie Figueroa was the national champ in twenty twenty four, taking out Iowa's only finalist, Drake Ayala. Ayala put a lot of pressure on Figueroa in the finals, but Richie Figueroa stayed smart and became, I would say, the favorite hand of the twenty twenty five season now. The only major thing that makes me hesitant to pick Richie Richie Ferro as my pick for the 2025 champ is the inconsistencies he had during the season. I do believe he wasn't 100% healthy that first semester and was rushing back a little too much, but that last stretch of the season he really came alive and lived up to all the hype he had coming into college. With all that said though, my pick is going to be very interesting in some people's eyes because I'm going with a freshman coming in for the Nittany Lions as my pick. For those who have no idea who I'm talking about, I am talking about the high school star Luke Lillidal to take the title as a true freshman next season. I seriously think he is just that good and talented already, let alone he develops at Penn State. Obviously, the Nittany Lions have Davis right now at 125, but I would not be shocked if he bumped up or redshirted this season. But we could talk about all that in my Penn State lineup breakdown, which, trust me, is coming out soon, I promise. For now, though, Luke Lillidal of Penn State is my pick to be an NCAA champion next year. And to be honest, he might just redshirt next year and not even wrestle at NCAAs, but this video would be super boring if I didn't take any risks, so there's my pick for 125. I'll stay a little more calm for this pick, sticking with the returning third place finisher and my original pick to win it this year, Ryan Crookham of Lehigh. Unfortunately for him and most of the field, Vito Rujau returned to form and dominated the tournament to earn his second title at 133. I think most people would pick Crookham as their way too early champion. So with that said, I'll stick to the norm, but there's a lot of hammers in this field, so it might be a development battle this offseason to see who can overtake the throne. One forty one halfway through the season slowly left the real woods conversation as it entered into the Bo Bartlett and Jesse Mendez conversation. They split during the season with Mendez winning big tens and then pulling a massive trick out of his hat to win it all this past March. Bartlett originally was going to be done for the twenty twenty five season, but I believe he's coming back for his final year of eligibility. And I don't really know why he wouldn't, considering he's probably staying at State College anyway to pursue his freestyle goals. Originally I thought this pick was going to be really tough because Mendez and Bartlett wrestle so close every single time they wrestle, but then I remembered one individual is going to be coming back out of an Olympic red shirt, and that is the 2023 NCAA champion from Northern Colorado, Andrew Alirez. Now I realize Mendez and Bartlett can very much compete with Alirez, but I'm rolling with the 2023 champ for this one for now. It's also crazy to think that the three-point takedown really favors Alirez's style. He went from an already crazy bonus point percentage and now it's going to be going through the roof in 2025. So I'm really excited to watch Aliras at the trials and I'm really excited to see him battle up against Mendez and Bartlett which are two matches I really hope we get in the 2025 NCAA championships.
Like so many of the weight classes we're going to be talking about, 149 really doesn't lose much, except for Michigan's finalist Austin Gomez, who ended his career at his third school. However, I think the returning champ for Virginia Tech, Caleb Henson, will have anything but an easy shot to repeat, considering Ridge Lovett, Ty Waters, and Kyle Parko are all returning to the field on top of so many others to mention. There's also the 2023 third place finisher and favorite to probably win it all, Shane Van Ness of Penn State, who is more than likely returning for the Nittany Lions at 149 after suffering a season-ending injury this past season. However, if Shane Van Ness is not back to form, I'm sure Tyler Kasich will take the spot at 149 again. And man, just to make this pick even harder, if Sammy Sasser returns to form after what he's been through, like what? I don't even really know how you can make a pick with guys like this level that have gone through this much adversity. So to be honest, for 149, I'm gonna let you all discuss it in the comment section below. But I will say this, if Van Ness is back to form and there's no Sammy Sasser, on the field probably going with Van Ness. However, if Sammy Sasso comes back and is the form after everything he's been through, I really don't know how you pick against them. So that's my way too early pick right now. But obviously this field, a lot can change. So rolling with Sammy Sasso, but I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. But moving on to 157. Yes, the title card did say 157 and 165, but we'll get to that in a second. 157 is super interesting to me because all you hear is how hard of a weight cut Levi Haynes had and how big he is at the weight class. Yet besides some close matches early on in the season, he really looked great all year with a lot of energy throughout. With that said, there was a lot of stories heading into this season that 165 runner-up Mitchell Messenbrink looks sort of small 165. So I think we all see where this is going, but but my picks for 157 and 165 is basically whoever Penn State throws out there. I know that's kind of an easy answer, but how do you not pick this? For example, David Carr is gone at 165, along with Keegan O'Toole, Missouri, more than likely bumping up to 174. With everyone else at 165, Messenbrink has beat before. With Hamity of Wisconsin, I'm sorry, I mean Hamity of Oklahoma State being maybe, and that's a big maybe the only wrestler to be able to take out these Penn State guys. At 157, there's a lot of studs, especially with guys like Meyer Shapiro of Cornell, but I really can't think of a reason to pick against Levi Haynes or Mitchell Messenbrink at either of the weight classes. My only thought is one of them can't make 157, which right there is a huge issue for my picks, not really a huge issue for Penn State, I'd say, but let's just wait to find out a little bit more information. Heck, maybe Haynes will bump up to 165 and Messenbrink goes 174. You know what? I need to save some of this for my way too early Penn State preview, so let's talk 174. With Carter Soraki reportedly saying he is not coming back for his fifth and final year of eligibility to potentially become the only five-time NCAA champ, it looks like Missouri bump out Keegan O'Toole is more than likely the favorite to win it all. I know he lost a car in the NCAA semis this past year, but I think we all can agree he lost to an NCAA legend in David Carr, so yeah, he's still a favorite of weight class up. It would be so awesome to see Carr Starocki come back to battle with Keegan O'Toole, but I really don't think that'll happen, so my lock for 2025 is Keegan O'Toole for Missouri to be our 174 champion. One eighty four, I think, is pretty easy right now, considering Parker and Kaizen of you and I own the weight class, not really being tested all season, and the field basically stays the same for next year unless someone else emerges. The only super interesting wrinkle is Penn State adding Josh Barr out of redshirt in the one eighty four mix, and he was a highly touted recruit heading into state college. We saw a small glimpse of him at a few tournaments, and yeah, he's a super solid redshirt. But for now, I don't really think you can pick against. Kaizen, especially since we all know purple's a pretty cool color. So Parker Kaizen's my 2025 pick.
I think 197 is one of the most interesting weights considering the returning finalists and NCAA legends are no more, meaning there will for sure be a new champ at 197 and is not an easy pick by any means. This is one of those weights that will all come down to C placement, which we clearly won't know for about 11 months. Right now, I would say the favorite is a third place finisher for Oklahoma Stephen Buchanan, which to be honest, a national champ might be what Oklahoma needs to return to form, but there is also Jacob Cardenas, who just transferred to Michigan, to throw a wrinkle into the field. Clearly, Buchanan beat Cardenas for third place this past year, but obviously Cardenas is still a worthy opponent. I'm pretty sure Michael Beard of Lehigh still has some eligibility left, and he always had Cardenas' number last year. If Rocky Elam can stay healthy for Missouri, we all know he has the potential to win it. On top of all that, there could just be some youngster that pops out of nowhere to really throw a wrench into the field. Amongst several other wrestlers that were in the field this year that could emerge as well. I seriously just have no idea at 197. Let me know what you all think in the comment section below because I really can't decide. Just kidding. Maybe it's because of the recent transfer news or something, but I'm rolling with Cardenas in Michigan, but I seriously think it could go any which direction. I think heavyweight is either super fun next year or not fun at all. If Kirk Fleet decides to use his last year of eligibility, I'm running with him all the way. However, if that's not the fact, I don't know how you don't roll with Nick Feldman of Ohio State, especially if Wyatt Hendrickson can't use his final year at another school, which I think they should let him since he's already joined an athletic program that they run for freestyle training through the armed forces. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that. I was just super impressed with Nick Feldman's growth over the past season, and his performance at NCAAs was really stellar. I still think he has a long way to go, but I consider last year like a redshirt season for him since he was hurt his entire true freshman year. So I think he's going to continue to make big jumps this offseason, and I'm really excited for it. But if Kirkley does come back, that has to be my pick. However, Feldman did make huge jumps each time they wrestled, so I think it would be a really entertaining final between them. Well, everyone, there we have it. A full list of way, 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 way too early NCAA picks. Some were a lot easier than others, and some have way too many variables to make a guess on, but here we are. If you stuck around this long, be sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button while you're down there. Well, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, I hope you all have a nice day or night or whenever the heck you're watching this, and take care, everybody.